righteousness. Is that what it says? And so I believe that a person will be blessed and they'll be satisfied and content when they're feeding their hungry souls. You know, just as our body needs food, our soul needs to be fed. And so I'm thankful for that. And so they were singing about our hearts given to God just now. Uh, the title of today's message is Doing the Will of God from Our Heart. They didn't know what I was preaching. I didn't know what they were singing. God knew. Do what you do from your heart. Come out your spiritual heart that God gave you. And I promise you, you'll be the, the better for it in the end. Think about Romans chapter number 12, verses 1 and 2. I beseech you, therefore, by, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice. Uh, holy acceptable unto God, which is your what? Reasonable. Not unreasonable for you to give your bodies unto God. Amen? And be not conformed to this world, be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. There is the will of God again in that verse. Listen to Ephesians chapter, uh, I believe it is chapter 5, verse number 17. Bible says there, be not unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is. Be not unwise. You know, uh, Satan has a will for your life. Uh, Mom, Grandpa have a will for the, your life. Different people that you uh, have confidence in and different ones that are your counselors. There is safety in the multitude of counselors. Write it all down. Okay, what other people are saying. That's good. But in the end, do what God says. Amen. Crumple up that paper and throw it in the basket. You do what God says to do. And I promise you, uh, you will be in the will of God. Amen. You will be in the will of God. So the question should be asked this morning, is your passion on performing and doing not the good will of God, not the, uh, the acceptable will of God, but the bullseye, I'm talking about the perfect will of God for your life. Now, I'm sure there's a plan B. God will pick you up and shake you off and dust you off and get you to plan B. Uh, or even plan C. Thank God for a merciful Savior, as the song was just sung. Amen. Thank God there's a plan B for folks who have failures. We have, we've all had failures. Uh, some people have catastrophic failures. What then, Pastor? Plan B. He has a plan B for your life. Amen. Amen. Plan C. Thank God for that. <laughs> but you people uh, out here this morning, let's strive to do God's perfect will for our life. You understand where I'm going that? From the heart, okay? Not with eye service as the text said this morning. This was identifying the slaves who maybe perhaps did not want to be under servitude to their masters. But God said, for them not to serve their masters with eye service, but as unto the Lord. Now the question is asked this morning, if a slave was asked to serve his master as unto the Lord, not with eye service, but doing the will of God from the heart, how much who are free us this morning? Should we not serve the Lord this morning, not with eye service, not because someone's looking at me do something, and so I want to please them. We're not here to please men. We're here to please the Heavenly Father. Amen. God says for us to serve the Lord Amen. from our heart. Are we not going to love the Lord with all of our what? Heart, yes. our mind, Amen. our body, our strength? Of course we know this. So I want to be known as the church with the heart. Amen. Amen. I want to be a church with a heart, a heart for missions, a heart for souls, a heart for Christian education, a heart for military, thank you military out there, a heart for the Gulf Coast, a heart for the world, a heart for children, a heart for bus ministry. I think we ought to put a sign out front underneath that Temple Baptist out there, those big bold letters, Temple Baptist Church, a church with a heart. A heart, a heart for souls, amen. The heartbeat of God, what is it? Souls. Getting people saved. Getting people baptized, that's the great commission, is it not? And then added unto uh, the fellowship. Then they gladly received his word, were baptized, and added unto the church. That's the great commission. That's the order. And you found yourself some years later 
uh, not being truly saved and you were already baptized, guess what? You need to be baptized the scriptural order. Amen. You need salvation, then baptism, then church identification. We understand this. We understand the perfect will of God. Uh, some people have never heard about the perfect will of God. Some people have never heard about serving the Lord from their heart, the will of God from their heart. But man, I say to you, thus, of all of us who have heard it, we need to perform the doing of it. Can you imagine there's countries without one single church like ours that's telling us what to do from the Bible? I was visiting last year Austria. Here's a country of 9 million people. I searched and searched and searched on a Wednesday night to go to a church like ours. Are you listening? Not one of nine million people. How much more should, to much is given, much is what? Required. How much more should we who have the truth and understand the truth and have a good Bible study here on Sunday morning at 10, have a good worship service here at at 11. How much should we who know the truth, how much should we allow that truth to set us all free to perform the doing of the will of God? Listen to 1 John chapter 2, verse number 17. The Bible says, The world passeth away in the lust thereof, but he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. Amen. He that doeth the will of God. You're doing and performing the will of God. Think about some friends of mine in North Carolina, and they're in their mid to late 80s, pastors that I know personally. They've been doing the will of God so long they don't want to let go. They're just going to cling on to the will of God and hold on to that which they know God called them to do until they pass from this life or Jesus comes in the air. And I pray the latter is the one, amen, that Jesus catches us all home here soon. And when we were singing that song a while ago, uh, about the Lord descending with a shout with a trump of the archangel. Uh, I was singing that song. I felt like I was just getting a little bit lifted right there. And I felt like the Lord was wafting me on up, taking me on up to glory. And that wouldn't be a bad thing. Oh, no. Hey, when folks get promoted uh, to the next life and to the hereafter, don't mourn for them. Mourn for yourself. They're getting promoted. I'm saying they're getting a promotion time. Praise the Lord. And so we know that we're in the last days. The Bible says this about the last days. Come back tonight for our prophecy message. I hope you don't miss it at 6 o'clock tonight. The Bible says that in the last days that iniquity shall abound. We see that happening. People can't even come to church because iniquity is abounding. People can't even get in the will of God because there's so much sin out there. They just get sucked in like a vacuum, right? Okay. Because we know that in the last days iniquity shall abound. The Bible says the love of many shall wax cold. We get real cold-hearted. We get so indifferent. We get so callous and carnal uh, in our ways. And church, let's not lose our heart. Let's not lose our heart for these souls. I'm talking about this church right here on this corner for 46 years. Not, let's not get unplugged from the will of God and get plugged into materialism of this world and having a heart for other people. You say, what's the Christian life all about, Pastor? I'm new to this thing. It's others. Yeah. It's not focusing on your petty little problems and all the little issues and all the dramas that are going on in your life. You know, you get caught up in all that. You never, you just be spinning the rest of your life. No, our life is not to think about our set of issues and problems and circumstances. Our, our, our goal is to soar up above all that. So we may help people. Uh, let's stay on the victory side, in other words, so that we might help people uh, be overcoming Christians as well. Because there's some people that really need our help. Let's not condemn them. Let's not point our finger at them. Let's reach out to them and help them up. Don't kick them while they're down. Right. Did you know you may be the next one? Right. I talked to a dear lady this last week. Oh, by the way, she trusted Christ. <laughs> she trusted her and says her Savior. So glad. Well, listen, I didn't go to her. She called the office, and then Chris met her somewhere. She was so uh, in need of Jesus in her life that she wanted to cry out to the Lord. She just didn't know how. And when we, when we got there, we understood the fact she'd already been crying out to God uh, one time over an hour and a half by herself, not knowing exactly what to say. In my heart and in my mind, I think she probably was saved before we ever got there. Yeah. Uh, tears are our language, God understands. Amen. <laughs> and so do things from the heart. Yes. 
Sing. When you sing, sing from your heart. I asked Brother Ray Young, who's preached here many times. I hope they had it back maybe in March. And, and, and I asked Brother Young, I said, what was the secret to Dr. Howes' ministry? He was his best uh, man for all those years. And, and, and there's days that they had uh, way up there, I think they had over 20,000 coming in on buses alone. Or this was one Sunday. I said, what? what made the difference in this man who had such fervor and such a burning passion to reaching the law and reaching people? Uh, what, was his, what was his secret? Brother, Brother Ray Young said about Dr. Howes, he said this. He said, whatever he did, he did it with all his heart. Bless the Lord. Whether it was preaching a funeral, whether it was preaching a, a wedding, whether it was going to the convalescent center, whether, whatever he did, a youth conference, a, a a youth conference or a Bible school or pastor school or whatever he did, he literally gave everything he had. He died of a broken heart. You know, I'd rather die uh, of burnout. I should say it this way. I, I, I'd rather burn out than rust out. Wear out than rust out. Amen? And so so many are lacking uh, in this area of giving their heart to the Lord. I'm talking about the work ethic we need. Where does it come from? It doesn't come from the flesh. The arm of the flesh with faith is the old song said. And we know unless the Holy One come down, there's another song that says it this way, all is in vain. That's right. We know that's true. We know the scripture says in Zechariah 4 and 6, not by mind nor by power, by thy spirit, say the Lord. So what is the secret that energizes us Christians to do the thing? We don't know what we need to do. What puts us on that straight and narrow path every week past? What is it that guides our hands and guides our feet? He leads us beside the still water, does he not? Amen. He leads, guides, and directs us. This is the will of God. I want to say first of all this morning, parents love not just when the children are looking, but love from the heart we see here. This is the prescription of how to have a good home life, okay? And parents and children, uh, we all need to pay close attention to these verses this morning. It says, children, obey. That's not just when you want to or feel like it. That's from now until they pass and even honor them after they're gone. Obey your parents and the Lord for this is right. That's not just to take up space. That's in the holy word of God. It says to honor them, honor them, thy father and thy mother, which is the first commandment with promise that it may be well with thee, that thou mayest live long on the earth. I'm sure if I ask this section right over here, these young people, these teenagers, Brother Richard, they're looking good wherever you're at. Oh, there you are. They're looking pretty good. I didn't see you over there. I'm sure if I ask this group over here, uh, if you like to have a long life, Every one of them say yes. Yes, Pastor. I like that. That sounds pretty good. We just heard of a man in our Sunday school class that's born at 16 years of age. Brother Theo was telling us about had a heart attack and died at 16. Oh, my. I believe God's Word. If you want to have a long life, listen to your parents. Respect your parents. Obey your parents. When they say something to do, don't hesitate. Jump. I was dedicating a house not too long ago with one of my children. My son-in-law uh, just built a new house beside me. And, and Pastor Carl was over there and he uh, read some scriptures. And it was this one that he read. May be well with thee and thy days may be long upon the earth. I prayed the dedicatory prayer of the house, asking God's blessings and holy angels come and protect the four corners of the property. But when he said what he did from the word of God, that it may be well with thee that thy days may be long upon the face of the earth. And then he made this statement, and I pray. He said, it didn't surprise me that Brother Dan and Sister Jackie got this house because he gave me this much trouble growing up, this much. You see that, kids? Zero. <laughs> Zero trouble. Zero. How much trouble are you giving your parents? Boy, that's heavy right there, isn't it? I sure wouldn't want to put grief and anguish on the mind and the heart of my parents. I hope it can be said that he always did what his parents said to do. You know, I got a, a brother in heaven today because he didn't say, he didn't do what the parents said to do. I can trace it all the way back and I go back to what happened in my brother's life. He wasn't a bad, 
young man. He was a very good young man, but my dad specifically said not to trade down to a Volkswagen. You've got a nice car with that Malibu. You keep the Malibu, it's a lot safer than that Volkswagen. He went around my parents, he went to his girlfriend's mom, and she signed for him to trade down. Oh dear. He's in heaven today. That it may be well with thee, that thy days may be long upon the face of the earth. I believe the Bible. Amen. Try to scare me, Christ, if I could. I would. You better listen to your godly parents. Amen. You better not turn and run from your godly example and your godly pattern. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. I'm saying parents love, not just when the children are looking. Love from the heart. You know why? They're only going to understand what you say coupled with love. You're not going to be able to browbeat your children into subjection with a rod of iron somehow. You're going to say, hey, oh, preacher said to a baby, pow. <laughs> that won't work. <laughs> you better do it with a tear in your eye. You better do it with a heart of love. So the message this morning about doing the will of God from the heart, very close, very tender right in here when we're talking about raising children. Am I right about that? Yeah. Now listen, some don't want to. Uh, to go to the extent and to the effort of raising their children, the nurture and the admonition of the Lord. But the Bible says if we train them yeah. in the nurture and the admonition, training, it requires a lot of effort. Got some, Sister Brooks about to go off call. She's going to be receiving some training maybe to be but whatever God wants her to be. It takes a lot of effort. Parents, it takes a lot of effort to train your children. Hardest thing. You know why people aren't having kids? It's hard to do it. Hard to train them to do right. It's easy to let them do what's wrong and do, do what they want to do. But boy, it takes a heart of love to train children to do the will of God from the right. heart. From the heart. By the way, when the young people are doing something, would you pray for them? They're going off to Zachary, Louisiana to a teen uh, camp this week. And, and would you pray for their safety? Would you pray to have a good time in the Lord? I want to speak to the children. Children, love not just when the parents are looking. We were talking about eye service a while ago. We're to honor them. This is for their whole life. Amen. This is for uh, until you uh, say goodbye there and you say a few words. Brother Aaron knows about it. He's praying for me, by the way. He's in church. Mama's looking down, Brother Aaron. Amen. I mean, when you say your final goodbyes, and you, you can say, you know, Mama, I did everything I know that you want me to. And I'll continue. That's the best salute you can give a parent when they go on to glory. Is that, you know, I, I'm still on track. Amen. I'm still doing the will of God for my life. Amen. You see, there's a, there's a reason we're in church this morning receiving instruction from the Word of God. And, and so this morning, hey, you know what? It, it, it could get harder and harder to live the Christian life. What then? Well, a lot of it's going to fly out. Uh, the fluff are going to fluff off. And then they're going to go somewhere else. No one said it was going to be easy. It's going to be a sacrifice. It's going to be a, a disciplined life. The only person that's going to be able to make it is a person like those elder gentlemen that just keep on going year after year after year, like the Noah Fries and, and the Russell Bells, year after year. What keeps them going, Pastor? It's the love from the heart, doing the will of God from the heart. There's no way we can explain Russell Bell. There's no way. He's a miracle. Seven times that shot, that defibrillator has gone off while he's been preaching. I watched him shake the dust off his feet and sit there just for a little moment. He caught his, he got his composure and he got back up and he finished his message. Amen. There's just no way to explain that. That's why we support him like a missionary. He's out there as a missionary man just on the road. Amen. And so the thought is, do we do things from the heart because we know our parents are watching? Are you doing things from the heart because you want to do right towards them and you love them and you know what they're saying is true? The Bible te teaches here in our scripture this morning that we do it with trembling uh, hearts. Did you notice that? Uh, because uh, we, we, uh, the sal we let our salvation uh, come out in fear and trembling. Uh, amen. I wish I could find that verse. Uh, but uh, here it is. Verse number five. It says, with fear and trembling, trembling and singleness of your heart as unto Christ. Again, we're speaking to people who are in bondage. 
How much more should we have singleness of heart and trembling in spirit, we who are free to do and to live as God leads us to do? We should have the fear of the Lord. It's the beginning of wisdom, by the way. Yes. That's not being afraid of. That's not it's somehow in a corner somehow and afraid of God ever do anything. No, no, no. No, it's a, it's a total respect of who God is. An awesomeness. You have an awesomeness in your mind, a respect towards our Lord. And whatever He says in His Bible, preacher don't have to demand it. Preacher don't have to push it down your throat. Preacher doesn't have to uh, come around inspecting uh, your homes and your lives. No, no, no. You do it because it's in the Bible. Amen. You do it because you know God Amen. wants you to do that, you see. There's people, there's plenty of people out there who don't even claim God. They claim that they, they, they're atheists somehow. I don't believe that there is one. No. I think that's some kind of cover-up. I think that's some kind of uh, something to hide behind. Yes. It's not true. They know there's a God. Yeah. Right. It's written on the tables of their heart, the scripture says. That's right. So let's do things from the heart. If God writes his word in our heart, oh, should we do things? We know what we should be doing. All preacher is on Sunday morning is an encourager. All church is, is is a place to come to feel encouraged to do the right thing. Uh, to be rewarded for doing that which is right and holy. Uh, we love you today. We, we love your families. We love, we, we love what you stand for. And, and we're, listen, we're not much alone, but when we all stand together, when we all pray together, and when we all put our heart and, and our emphasis all on the same thing, guess what? Much can be accomplished. There's no telling what could happen if one person totally gave their heart and life to Christ. Amen. Dio Moody heard those words and he said, I want to be that man. <laughs> I want to be that man who totally gives his heart to Jesus Christ. I'm going to say lastly, We've talked about uh, the fathers and the mothers. We've talked about the parents. We've talked about employees. But how about the employer? Let's talk about them. Whether we hire, uh, or as in this case, for free labor, uh, as it was in those days. But how about we who employ people? Amen. We need to do things according to verse 9 without Threatening, forbearing, means to look over uh, their faults like Christ did on the cross. He looked beyond our faults and saw us in our need as sinners. We're all sinners. We have liabilities, every one of us out here. But we need to accept folk for who they are like Jesus did. He accepted me with all of my sins. He accepted me with all of my faults. Don't be pick, uh, fault finding now. And don't pick out everybody's faults that you see. Why? Because you're just lying to yourself because you have the same faults. That's right. right. You have the exact same faults as them because you're made out of the same weak flesh. And don't go get too high and mighty. Don't get too hypocritical. Don't get too pharisaical. You know why? You'll find yourself. The Bible says, the man that thinketh that he standeth, take heed lest he also stumble and what? Fall and a pride will before destruction and Holy Spirit before a what? A fall. And so we, we have to understand, we have to be careful how we walk this life. We better do it in humility, haven't we? We better do it uh, with humbleness of heart and the fear of the Lord. And so, uh, listen, God's not a prejudiced God. He's not a partial God. He rewards those who are working for Him. In the will of God, He feeds. Listen, our God feeds even His enemies. Oh. What a God we serve. I mean, listen, he has an unlimited treasury. You need to get in on the will of God because if he'll feed his enemy and reward his enemy, how much more will he give to those who love him? Yeah. Huh. Woo. You know, there Paul said, he said, uh, but not for me only talking about the reward, but to all those who love his appearing. I think we should come back tonight to hear that prophecy message because you know what? It's just right there. We're right at the doors. I mean, we are right on the edge of eternity. We're right there. We're, you know, everything my daddy preached for 65 years, and everybody thought he was a, it's crazy. He, he, they thought he was, everything he preached has come to pass or is right there at the door. Amen. And I think we ought to take Amen. heed. I was able to be under some great preachers. I think we ought to, I, I, all I am is just an accumulation of those behind me. I picked up some of these, these things uh, from one person or the other person, and I've accumulated it, and I'm just sorting through it, and I'm giving it to you and from as it comes from the Word of God. I'm giving it to you as I've had life experience, and we need to listen to instruction. Amen. We sure do. We get off the straight and narrow path. How quickly? Huh. Does, yeah. How long does it take you to backslide? Someone answer that question. <laughs> 
Not too, not very long. Amen. And so we should be motivated to love Jesus Christ and to serve Him from the heart because we know He loves us all the same. Yeah. He's not partial like we are. He loves us all the same. God loves this. He don't love a certain kind or a certain color or a certain race or a certain creed or a certain religion. Yeah, God loves us all. He created us all. He yeah. reaches out to all. Praise the Lord for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. So listen, he's at work even when you're asleep. Praise the Lord this morning. I'm saying tonight, today, he is fair. God is just. And he knows, listen, God knows how to tip the scale in your faith. If you don't believe that, you just wait on the Lord and see if God can't do that. He does. The Bible says over there in Romans chapter 8, and I think you'll find it uh, over there in verse number 31. If he freely gave us his son, how much more? Huh? Shall he not freely give us all things? It's not the things that we're serving him for. And if, you, if you're serving God for the things, you're serving for the wrong way. You need to serve him from the heart. God will take care of you if he's serving from the heart. Yeah, that's right. And we know that all things work together for good. Yeah. To them that love the Lord. Be yeah. loving. Right. Yeah. To them who are called by his name. And so we're doing the things we're doing uh, basically from the heart. Why? Because it's right to do. Not because necessity has laid it upon us and laid it in our lap. No. Many of us, look, we just need to uh, get pointed in the right direction on Sunday. Right. We need to organize our schedule to know that we've got so many days left. The Bible says to, to, to order your steps and, and to number your steps. Why? Because we know that they're few. And then one of these days our steps are going to they're going to vanish away. We're not going to be able to uh, do anymore. And there's coming a day. Listen, we need to get our lives. We need to uh, uh, get our lives in order. We need to set our houses in order. Yeah. Wasn't long ago, uh, I had a young preacher boy. He surrendered under me, and he became assistant pastor for a preacher out in California. And he had a lot of debt. He went to his pastor. You have to be so careful. Went to his pastor. And his pastor. Uh, recommended him to get out of the ministry. I've never heard this before because he had too much debt. Maybe he thought it was going to become a shame uh, unto him or the church if he filed bankruptcy or that kind of thing. I don't know what kind of debt he had. It must have been a lot. But, you know, instead of continuing in the ministry, he took that advice. It was bad advice. And now this young man is middle-aged, okay? And he's never returned to his calling. And this was the bad, wrong advice. And I believe, listen... God will help you. He'll give you instructors. He'll give you counselors and this type of thing. But you need to listen to the still, small voice of God in your heart. Yeah. You need to take advice from the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit's the best teacher now. Right. Yeah. Now, I'll meet with you on Sunday night after church if you'd like. I'll meet with you on Wednesday. That is, I'd rather you just come to all three services. And then if you have something to ask me after all that, I'll be sure to counsel with you. You know what I really believe, though? I believe you'll come to three to thrive and four to soar. I believe you'll come to all three services. God, the Holy Spirit, will speak to you about what you need to do. Amen. 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 I don't have to say a word. God, the Holy Spirit, will tell you. Right. He's living in my heart. How about you? Amen. This young man has never returned to his calling. Can you imagine that? Yeah. I mean, the pastor meant well. Uh, the preacher meant well. But I believe this. I believe that the will of God will help you get out of the debt. Yes. I believe the will of God will go around and, and soar above the circumstances and, and keep us all in the will of God. This young man is not in the will of God. In conclusion, I don't want you to get out of the will of God. I don't want you to quit serving the Lord uh, from your heart the will of God. So I want to conclude by saying this. Please, just keep going for the Lord. Yes. Just keep serving God. I mean, listen, if you're just inching it up off of your salvation experience, look at verse 10, and I am done. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord. How do I be strong in the Lord? No says, here, here's the answer. Just keep reading the Bible. It's his best commentary, isn't it? Amen. And the power of his might. <laughs> there it is. Not the might, nor my power. It's his might. Amen. You know where I'd be today without the Lord and his holy will for my life. I'd be in big trouble. I'd be in some big trouble. I wouldn't have those four darling little children God gave me. I wouldn't have those sweet little old youngins, 13 little old grand youngins. Sister, keep clicking. Keep counting over there, 13. You got it? 
Sister Judy has got a little boy coming. Aww. She FaceTimes us, and I said, show us the bump, show us the... <laughs> she got it. Little boy, baby. Isn't that precious? Uh, I, I, when we get out of church on Wednesday night, sometimes I'll uh, I look on there. Uh, they, they FaceTime like we do our services. And uh, well, it's Wednesday night. They just come through a big soul wedding. Uh, what they call this thing? A marathon. marathon. And they had so many hundreds saved. And, and they had the people who was winning people to Christ get up, get up and give their testimony to the church. And I, I just turned it on. I kid you not. I was going down the road. I just turned it on. My daughter was standing up in the church giving testimony. Oh, hallelujah. You talking about having a spell. I said, that young, that young is going to preach. Look at there, she's in. <laughs> you don't think that did this, this daddy a good thing. I'll tell you, that helped my heart. Sure. That helped me know that I'm still on the right track. But wait a minute, even in, even in our senior year, even later on in life, it, what, what if we just give up and quit and divorce our wives and, and get rid of the will of God and just go live like we want to live? Just ask the question. You think our children will continue living for the Lord? No. no. It affects them in a long and negative way. That's right. It points them down the wrong road. They want to do whatever mom and dad's doing. You understand that? My wife has said several times to me, she's so glad that her daddy never did like to drink alcohol. She said, because whatever my daddy did, I don't want to do it. Because I believe whatever he does is right. <laughs> and if he did it by condoning it and did it, she said, I would no doubt have done it. Parents let that sink deep down in our hearts today. That's right. They're watching us. That's right. We're influencing their little life. We're shaping and molding their life. Not so much by what we say, but by what we do. Let's ask the Lord to help us now. Father in heaven.